Hello everybody, Finger Trap Master here, and we are back with more Dragon Quest Monsters Joker 2. In the last part, I took on uh, the Gigantus, killed it. It did respawn, but I saved right near it because I had to go back and heal. So, if you save next to like a stationary monster or just any monster, then they will disappear. So that way you don't start the game and you just march into a battle. So, uh... What you want to do here is grab this torch, and then you have to go back. I'm pretty sure you can't fight monsters during this. Whoa! Whoa, volume control. Ninja Gigantus right there. Okay then, that was kind of freaky. And run away from Geocats, I've been getting very lucky lately. Uh, considering that we beat the Gigantus using the power of crits, and uh... Got like 770 XP, I think, if that's how I recall it. And also, bah, also I've been scouting a lot of monsters to find a synthesis partner for uh, Batula. And ironically, they've all been like usable to synthesize with Batula, so I'm just picking one out. And um, while holding this torch, I don't think you can have enemy encounters, so just avoid all enemies. I'm not, don't quote me on it, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. And, but other than that, you just, uh, go all the way back. But, and we're just gonna basically watch, this cutscene will, like, play, like, four times throughout this entire area. One reason I don't like this area that much. But, I, um, one thing, though, is that, uh, I can't remember why I synthesized my Draki with last time to get... Actually, no, I used my dragon to make a Hyper Hydra for last time, but this time, I don't think I'm going to use a Hyper Hydra, because I didn't really use it in my first playthrough, because it, like, took forever to, like, level up, and I just said like a lot, because I'm, like, such a popular, like, teenager, yeah, alright, so then, and this thing gets knocked out, so, but, it would kind of mess with my synthesis pass for a bit, but thankfully there's an item called the Phoenix Scepter. And that lets you synthesize two monsters and whichever one's holding it, the result will always be that monster. So you can basically use it to boost their stats like crazy. And there is, and one of the monsters I need for my synthesis chain is Scoutable. And so instead of synthesizing it, I'll just scout one. And then use the Phoenix Scepter on, with it in my team member and then move on. But... Until then, I don't think I'm going to be making the Pally Yowie because I don't remember how. And honestly, I want to try something new. I'm thinking of making a brownie by putting together Buddy and a Hammer Hood. Or making a Hammer Hood with uh, Batula if I really want to get complex. And uh, making a Hammer Hood with Bat Batula if I really want to get complex because I can do that. And then uh, fighting... Not fighting, and then using that to make a brownie, because brownies seem like a good monster, and they're D-rank, which is kind of ironic, because you, like, use an F-rank, an F-rank, and you get, oh, follow Geocats here. Wait, where are they? Where are they? God damn, monster. Here's the baby b join. He will be coming at us at the rate of Lyo Shenlong and Shen Goen combined. So kind of fast, but again, you don't really have to worry about him. He is not a problem in the slightest to avoid and stuff. And points to whoever got the reference I just made. AKA for reference to my most favorite game ever. But to find fires, you just gotta follow these footprints because Gigantuses apparently are pyromaniacs and leave fires. And what's this over here? Alrighty then. Uh, pinball, useless, except for fighting metal monsters, but oh wait, we have Metal Slash, so pretty much useless. Alright, so um, just keep on going, there isn't really much to say about this place. And now we got the same boss fight again, only it's free Hellhounds. Whoa. Again, I don't remember how to make a Hellhound, but I'll put it in the description to this part like I did with the last part. And... Yeah, they're not that great of monsters, I'm just telling you, but my policy is any monster in this game can be good. As long as you synthesize it right. Like, 
That's kind of an exaggeration because there are some that will just no, never be as good as others, but you can make a really good Hellhound. They just, again, won't be as good as others. So now we got three Hellhounds. Since Hellhounds aren't really big monsters or anything, then they're basically, they're going to be kind of weak to Sandstorm and all that uh, crap. So we're just going to kind of just use Sandstorm and win because they can, they don't really resist Sandstorm that well. And then, once they're all blind, or at least most of them are blind, then we will just go in. And let's see, he uses Warcry, and good! I was afraid he'd stun DOPE! And, let's see... Sandstorm with... Really? It missed them all? Eh. I've been lucky lately, and... Yeah. Speaking of luck, I actually... Yeah, I got... All the monsters I've scouted lately have been possible to synthesize with a, uh... Batula. And so, that's luck if I don't know it, because, again, Bachelor is getting kind of old since we scouted it and never synthesized it. So, yay, they're both blind now. How evil did I sound? Yay, they're blind! Bachelor's going to defend because Bachelor is a coward. Even though they're, oh, they're blind, but we're just going to use heal. And, yeah. I, in case you're wondering why I made Bachelor defend, I didn't. I just hit fight. And I have, uh, DOPE! Have the tactic of heal whenever you can, basically. Which is actually probably the best tactic to have, because the, the AI in this game for your monsters is really good. They know right when to heal, they know right when it's time to use the right move, they know all of that. You just gas up the tactic right. And that should be it. Yep. So, again, easy mini boss. And it doesn't even reward very good EXP. Alright. And then she's gonna be like, oh, he's good. And then it's like, oh, yeah, you heard me. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're great. And yeah, you're not Frosted Flakes. Alright. Now then. That area over there with the B joint, I think, has an upgrade. I'll double check. Uh, yeah, like, that we will fight her, I and mean, we have to make an agreement of that later when she gets a good team. Which will be never, even though we will fight her at one point, and she's mediocrely difficult. Alright, so now then, we're going to want to open this box, and get a set of machine parts. It's a blue one, so I think that's a respawning box, so you can always get sets of machine parts if you're willing to take some of a hike. And that jail cat truly launched a surprise attack because, yeah, I didn't see that one up here. I wasn't really paying much attention, but jail cats have a great ability that takes place at the beginning of battle, and it's called uh, strangely alluring, which I just find kind of funny. It makes it so it has a chance of immobilizing your monsters, or all of them. But I think the jail cat's like one of the only monsters that gets that ability. And oh no, Spatula died. Oh wait, there's a p health pillar here. But other than that, besides that set of machine parts and this health pillar, there's really nothing special over here except for more fire. Although, I wonder, technically couldn't you get the fire from the last place and carry that over to, and just skip a hellhound fight? Wouldn't that kind of mess up with a plan then, like, what's her face would just kind of teleport, but whatever. Somebody experiment for that for me, it, I don't know, they really have thought of how to fix many glitches in this game, like, there aren't that many things you can do to break the game this time, there weren't much you could do in the first game, but still, and, yeah, and I wonder if that would work, and we're just gonna march on back, and he's already here because he literally probably did not even move since we last left. And he's not going to charge until we light the fire. And here's how long the fire is going to work. We are going to light the fire. And that's going to act like he's not here. And then he's going to we'll be like surprised. Oh, hey. There he is. Look. An exclamation point will go over our head. Oh, I thought it would. But yeah. He probably hasn't moved since that last time we left him. Which is sadly true probably so he's just gonna charge and yeah 
Whoa. We've seen this cut exact cutscene. Um how many times? No, oh, yeah, three times. I'm sorry, I just kind of dazed off. That was supposed to be rhetorical, but apparently I don't even know when my own questions are rhetorical. And yes, that monster is stupid. She basically just said that, and it's true. Thankfully, I think that's the last time we need to deal with fire here. Alright, so I'm going to go check and see what's in that area. If I'm correct, there's like a power up there or something, like a new uh, scouting ability. But I can't remember. I know there's one here that's kind of well hidden, and, and by kind of well hidden, I mean, you know. Alright, is it in here? No, it's not, but it is required to go through this path to get to it. And he's already back up. Well, that sure does explain a lot. Um, I guess I'll show where to get the power up thingy, uh, later. Yeah, he's just kind of ignores. You see, these later giant monsters, they're really nothing. Like, you got the worm monger who's annoying, but, and is really annoying. The missing links who's just not that bad. He's kind of annoying, but he's not... Like, tear your hair out, like, oh, damn it, I was about to move on, now you're blocking my way. b -Jorn is, like, you have to try to get caught by him. You can't get caught by b -Jorn, I swear. And, um, and he is the last giant monster that chases you, actually. And we are almost to the end of this area, actually. How many times did I just say actually? Alright, but, and, yeah, I, I'll start out, I'll using the magic power of ending a part and then starting somewhere later, then I will show you where the little hidden power-up thingy is. It's not that good, I got through the entire game without using it, but I guess it could be helpful. So now we're just gonna do these pointless little wall climbing sections. They're supposed to kind of exist so you can get, you know, chased by flying monsters, but there aren't any flying monsters here. And looky who got a demotion! These fro frows, they are now tiny. Like, really, really tiny. Like, they used to be about the size of you, except, it, in fact, they were bigger. Like, way bigger. Now they're tiny. Alright, and we're at the boss! And there's the Countess, and the Countess, and stupid cow mouse thingy. It's just going to fly away because the Countess can. And this is going to lead us to an even fun boss battle that's pretty much a letdown. But still. And you see and see for red dot. Do, do, do. Red dot, red dot. From the camera. So we're just going to ignore these guys. I don't even think you can synthesize. You might. I think they can be used to make a jargon. But that's it. And we already have one. So. Alright. So here's the zip point. And. There's always one before a boss and a healing point. How am I on health? I'm all set on health and MP. Alright, good. One moment. Where's the exit? Ow. Alright, had to stretch there for a moment. This will be a kind of longish part because we have a boss fight ahead and I'm not going to end it early. Because that'd be ending it a bit too early and damn it, I wasn't looking where I was going. This adds more time to our riveting adventure. Yeah, I love this game. Alright. But our adventure, let's face it, is pretty lame. Oh no, we took nine damage! Oh no, now we won't be able to beat the boss. And... Yeah, the boss is a letdown, yeah. Uh, that's a dead end. It's hard to see with this angle right now, but... Ah, there we go, I can see a bit better now. I just, I'm trying to kind of look at the map to see what's, which way's a right turn. One moment. Damn it, why does the map have to go away when I pause? One moment. Sorry for the tilted angle, it's just, I can't remember which pathway to follow. It's this one, alright, good. Of course, uh, yeah, navigation in this game can be hard without your map. But, other than that, it's pretty easy, and... Is this the boss fight? I just went in a circle. Alrighty then. I'm sorry for that little detour. But, um, let's see. Alright, now we're going the other way. This time we're going to the boss for sure. Ow. 
Do 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 do. Alright. The Gigantus is harder than this thing. Hey, a fire! When I saw a fire, I knew exactly what was gonna happen. Alright. So, yeah. Get the Countess back. Yay! And then looky who's here! This is the boss! We will be fighting the baby B. John. If he can get here by the time the video ends. But yeah. Now, when I w got here, excuse my language, but I basically went, oh shit. Because I didn't think I'd be able to fight this thing, but then I thought, hey, it's a required boss. So like, oh no, we're trapped. Even though we can't just run right back into the cave that's a quarter inch away from us. No. And then he's going to charge into the wall and make the entire mountain collapse. And then we die. The end. Do do do. Charge and kill us. Now then, I have no idea how he's a threat. Because he's just going to hit this wall, basically. Instead of getting knocked out or knocking down the wall, like any good monster from Monster Hunter should, he will just, yeah, look at us and get up. And now we fight him. And he is a pushover. Well, depends on how you fight him. The way I fight him, it's basically, it's kind of like the abominable snowman from uh, Rudolph when it comes to this fight. Because he's really just a pushover. Alright, we're going to want to lead off with Weakening Wallop. I'm not even going to bother with Sandstorm. Use buff on my Ponkles to boost uh, their, like, stats and stuff. And basically, I'm just going to lower all of his stats. And, and then he's going to do, like, one damage to us per turn. And I should have used Cubuff because the Ponkles got that. Now, strange thing, he's called the Baby Bee Join. And he's already doing one damage to us. To the Ponkles, at least. He, they just really, they made it so he can't hurt you, basically. So, yeah, there is, n like, literally, this is a really easy fight. Like, he does hit your entire team, but he can barely hurt them. Especially if you boost their defense. Like, look at this. One da miss, five damage, one damage. Yeah. And he does hit your entire team and get used to fighting giant monsters. You fight a lot of them. And that's what why you need a good healer in this game. Because giant monsters hit your entire team. That's a guarantee. It's a horrible giant monster if it doesn't. But thankfully, and Hatchet Man just missed every single time. But thankfully, giant monsters... Uh... Every giant monster can do that. Boulder Dash. This is only really dangerous move. It's don't don't worry. Batcher one won't be missed. All right. Let's see if we can use weakening wall up and then just fight. It's that simple. When I did this, I lowered his defense and his attack stat. So he was doing like zero damage to my entire team. That's one, two, one. Pretty insane damage, huh? <laughs> Alright. And this is the fight. This is the fight. It's that simple. And now his attack's down. Now he can't hurt us. And Derp is so derpy that he can just walk on air. Oh no, he stunned my Ponkles. Um, I don't, I shouldn't even bother using, I'll use buff just because I can. Just gonna cripple him completely. Ooh, fire breath, that's actually kind of dangerous. Yeah, but other than that, he can't really hurt you. And so now we just hit him, like crazy. And why are you healing? <sighs> now your defense restore- Alright, screw this, I'm not going to bother setting up, I'm just going to finish him off, because my defense is restoring, he's doing two damage a turn. Funny, a free slot monster easier than a one- then a two slot monster boss fight. He actually, despite his looks, does not have that much health. He should be dying soon. Okay, his def his attack restored. Now he can hurt us a little bit. Is it me or was I not doing that much damage to him? 
Oh well. So now we just use Helm Splinter again. Use heal. And yeah, I don't think Helm Splinter was making much of a difference. Hey, do, do, do. And it's just a long fight. Uh, a long fight. I mean, he doesn't have much health, but the fight still goes on for a good while. Now, come on, kill him. <sighs> I was thinking this fight would be faster, so sorry for the lengthy video. But, alas. So now he's actually hurting us a little bit, but really, we don't have to worry much. Yeah. Well, this is exciting, isn't it? Um, well, on a side note, I reached 101 subscribers. And yeah, he's dead. Yay! That was really easy. And we get a bag of Dimium. That makes things stupider. What was their wisdom stat? I don't really focus on that that much. And so I'm not going to read the dialogue because I want to be able to start somewhere completely different. And so we knocked him out, even though he clearly exploded into a bunch of blue dust. But, whatever. And we are, like, all proud because we defeated the baby bee the infant, the infant idol of isolation. And, yeah, that was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we just go back to the albatross. And things are all merry, happy. Merry, do hunky. Whatever you want to say. And... Yeah, now, now we're going to go back to the tournament, but I will talk to you, well, yeah, I'll keep saying that at the end, but I will see you guys later. Sorry for this long part. All right, see ya.